गुड इवनिंग टुडे वी हैव अ केस प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन ओवेरियन ट्यूमर सो वी हैड अ 57 इयर ओल्ड फीमेल हुज पैराथ्री लिविंग थ्री स्टेरिलाइज्ड पोस्ट मेनोपॉजल हेलिंग फ्रॉम चेन्नई फ्रॉम लो सोशियो इकोनॉमिक स्टेटस केम टू द ओपीडी विद कंप्लेंट्स ऑफ एब्डोमेन पेन फॉर द पास्ट टू मंथ्स देयर वाज नो हिस्ट्री ऑफ स्पॉटिंग और ब्लीडिंग पर वेजेनम देयर वाज अ कंप्लेंट्स ऑफ फीवर नॉसिया एंड लॉस ऑफ एपिटाइट फॉर द पास्ट 20 डेज complaints of weight loss for the past one month and has lost about 5 kg there is no history of any postcoital bleeding or discharge per vaginum history of present illness patient had complaints of abdomen pain which was a lower abdomen wake sudden and onset and it's relieved on taking rest non radiating and it's increased on walking there is no complaints of spotting or any bleeding pv there is no complaints of any mass descending per vaginum she had complaints of fever nausea and loss of appetite for the past 20 days there was no complaints of any sore throat or cough complaints of fever for the past one month and has complaints of weight loss for the past one month and has lost about 5 kg menstrual history she attained menarche at 12 years of age attained menopause 2 years back at the age of 55 she had a previous regular menstrual cycle which was 3 by 28 day cycle changing two pads per day there was no history of passage of clots or dysmenorrhea no history of uh, cycle suggestive of pcod no history of menopausal hormonal therapy taken marital history she got married for about 35 years non consanguineous marriage there's no history of any uh, treated for infertility there's no history of any ovulation induction drug obstetric history she is a para 3 living 3 previous 3 nvd with sterilization done with the first child being a girl 31 years full term normal vaginal delivery alive and healthy the second was a boy baby who was 30 years old full term normal vaginal delivery and healthy third is a girl child who is 26 years old now normal vaginal delivery and is healthy past history there is no history of any diabetes mellitus hypertension bronchial asthma epilepsy or any thyroid disorder family history there is no history of any breast ovarian colon or endometrial carcinoma in the family there is no history suggestive of broca1 and broca2 mutation in the family no history of any family lynch 2 syndrome personal history no history of any reduced sleep loss of appetite bowel or bladder habits are regular on examination patient is thin built moderately nourished conscious and coherent her height was 155 cm weight with 50 kg with a bmi of 20.8 on examination patient who had no paler ectris cyanosis clubbing lymphadenopathy or any supraclavicular node uh, she was afebrile with her blood pressure of 130 80 mm of mercury pulse rate was 86 beats per minute her thyroid spines and breast were normal uh, cardiovascular system s1 s2 heard no murmur respiratory system normal vesicular breath sounds heard no added sounds per abdomen examination inspection she had a globular lump which is present occupying the right iliac fossa and a suprapubic area of 12 cross 14 cm with regular borders no ascites no engorged vein seen on all quadrants were moving symmetrically with respiration on palpation her abdomen was soft lower suprapubic and uh, the right iliac fossa mass of 14 cross 12 cm was seen which was cystic to firm in consistency non tender mobile margins were regular lower border was palpable no other organomegaly were appreciated hernia sites are free and uh, trans abdominal tubectomy scar was present on local examination in genitalia labia majora and minora were normal uh, labia minora was atrophic pubic hair was very sparse per speculum vagina and cervix were normal there is no utero vaginal descent or any no evidence of senile vaginitis on per speculum examination of the cervix um, by manual examination pv uterus was antiverted and bulky mid position vaginal wall was smooth adenoxal cystic mass was present on the right side which was 12 cross 14 cm non tender mobile groove sign was present and per rectal examination rectal mucosa was smooth freely mobile parametrium was normal no nodules in the pouch of douglas there was no blood on examining finger pap smear was taken for her and it was a normal smear ultrasound abdomen showed that it was a normal uterus with an endometrial thickness of 6.5 mm there was a right unilocular 12 cross 14 cross 10 cm cyst with a thin wall no solid areas suggesting of a benign ovarian tumor there was no free fluid her renal function test was done which was normal ct abdomen and pelvis was done which showed a normal uterus with a thickened endometrium right unilocular 12 cross 14 cross 10 cm cyst with a uh, cyst wall being very thin no solid areas suggesting a benign ovarian tumor and there was no free fluid similar to that of a ultrasound findings 
So what is a functional cyst and up to what size can it be called as functional cyst? Uh, functional cyst, corpus uh, luteal cyst or theca luten cyst it's called. Mm -hmm. Functional cysts are usually about 5 to 7 centimeters in size and the spontaneous regression will happen. Mm -hmm. When it is not regressed, then 3 to 4 cycles of oral contraceptive pills can be given. Okay. So how do you differentiate between a fibroid and ovarian tumor clinically? In fibroid, it usually occurs in reproductive age group. While ovarian tumors, it is always in extremes of ages. That is, uh, the germ cell tumors are much more common in younger age group. Fibroids, uh, their menstrual symptoms are much more common and the site is always in the midline, uh, almost mostly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is always a firm inconsistency. The lower mm -hmm. border is not felt except if it's a subserosal uh, pedunculated fibroid. The mobility is always side to side. Mm -hmm. Per vaginal findings, the mass will be continuous with the uterus and the movement of cervix will be transmitted to the mass. In case of an ovarian tumor, the menstrual symptoms are uncommon except in case of a functioning ovarian tumor. The site is, uh, it can be either towards a site. The consistency will be variable from cystic to heart. Mm -hmm. The lower border may be felt. Mobility, it will be mobile on, direct, on all directions. In pervaginal examination, uterus can be felt separately from the mass and the movement of the cervix is uh, not transmitted to the mass and groove sign will be positive. Okay, so in your patient, groove sign is positive? positive. Yes. So, what are the risk factors for developing ovarian tumor? Uh, first is age group, which mm -hmm. is 40 to 60 years. Mm -hmm. Then there is a family familial cancer like ovarian, breast, endometrium, colon, mm -hmm. HP and HNPCC, BRCA1, mm -hmm. 2, any mutations. And mm -hmm. uh, history of any, removal of any benign ovarian tumor or any breast carcinoma. And postmenopausal if there is a palpable ovary mm -hmm. or any relative or absolute infertility mm -hmm. and uh, usage of any ovulation induction agent or any uh, dysgenetic gonads, prolonged use of fertility drugs, work, women who are working in uh, asbestos induced or, or, or related industries mm -hmm. and any talc usage in the perineum, mm -hmm. early menarche and a late menopause, previous history of any polycystic ovarian disease, high fat diet or uh, tamoxifen therapy.